Hey everybody, welcome to Found Flix. It feels like it's been a really long time since we've paid a visit to the supernaturally infested small town of Hawkins, Indiana. That's because it will literally be a year and a half between season two and the upcoming season three out July 4th. The wait has been painfully long, but Stranger Things fans can rejoice as we finally have our first look of footage for the new season in a brand new trailer. Fortunately, after such a long wait, it kicks all kinds of ass. Set to The Who's Baba O'Reilly, which is from the 70s, but whatever. Giving us a great idea of what we'll have to look forward to, and it's chock full of so much in its runtime. Teasing new threats, friendships, the pains of growing older, and of course the Starcourt Mall, which looks to be the main hub of evil for the season. So let's check out the trailer, digging into every bit to piece together everything we see and give some theories based on what we learn as well. We begin with a forlorn Dustin sticking on a mixtape that must be from the kids' D&D sessions, seeing it's marked Will the Wise on one side. He sits alone, having returned from Camp Nowhere based on his outfit, what looks like a computer camp based on the logo. Even if his friends aren't there, at least Yertle the Turtle is okay. Then something strange happens. His toys come to life, marching together out of his room, armed with Farrah Fawcett hairspray, convincing himself it's just a dream, it's actually Eleven, controlling the toys with her powers. The rest of the group surprising Dustin with a hearty welcome home. So surprising, in fact, that Dustin unleashes some hairspray right into Lucas's face. Even if obviously growing apart, they still take time to spend with each other, going out on a ride and erecting what looks like a makeshift radio tower. We catch up with our amateur investigative journalist from last season, Jonathan and Nancy. By the way, that is one supremely 80s dress she's wearing. And it looks like their previous escapades with Murray taking down Hawkins Energy has made them interested in getting a job at the local newspaper. Then moving on to what appears to be the first of several major summer staples featured, the local pool, where our favorite pube-stashed bad boy Billy has gotten a job as a lifeguard, passing by a new character, fellow lifeguard Heather. This all seems especially important based on the previously released titles, The Case of the Missing Lifeguard. So it looks like someone will be going missing here that is tied to the season's bigger new threats. Hopper is looking especially dapper with his floral shirt, blazer, and jeans combo, lighting up a smoke at a fancy restaurant, yet at a table for two, he's sitting alone. Is that place reserved for a certain romantic interest, i.e. Joyce? If that is the case, the juxtaposition of shots here seem to reinforce this, seeing Joyce looking forlorn at home, eating by herself, indicating that she stood him up. Staring back to a house, Mike pauses to look back, and voice over declaring them not to be kids anymore, and how they aren't going to be playing D&D in their basement forever, directly taking on the pains of growing up, and having to abandon the things they loved as children and perhaps even their own friendships. While some friendships drift apart, new friendships are kindled, and I'm especially glad to see Eleven and Max bonding after Eleven's initial indifference, hopefully getting to show her the ropes of what being a normal teenage girl is all about, dancing around to 80s jams and reading Tiger Beat magazines, apparently. Again, showing us Dustin on the outs, he is left by the now couple of Max and Lucas after their smooch last season, which is at their weird radio tower thing that overlooks the city, the same spot seen in the poster, so I have a feeling this location will have some prominence in the season as well. Will looks to be having an especially tough time as usual with all of this too, reminiscing over season one and season two photos. What's really weird is that it looks like the roof is leaking or something because water drops are falling inside on the pictures, and he nearly breaks down into tears looking at the boys. My only thought being the potential that Joyce wants to move out of Hawkins after everything that's gone wrong, which is totally appropriate, but would also shatter Will's world too, because even the picture that he's looking at with them in the Ghostbusters outfits, during that time he was dealing with some pretty serious stuff, so there's got to be more to why he's so upset. Our first peek at the Starcourt Mall, where at least Dustin still has his burgeoning friendship with Steve to fall back on, seen doing a pretty snazzy friendship handshake, including a lightsaber duel, as his co-worker, the new character Robin, looks on unamused. She's said to be a bored alternative girl looking for adventure, who will no doubt get more than she bargained for when uniting with this group. At night, we see the mall is freaking packed, looking like a new major hub in the small town. And it is the 80s after all, who can stay away from the mall? And it looks like it's thanks to Max that Eleven gets her first look at the mecca of commercialism, looking bewildered and amazed when stepping into the food court. Yeah, it's pretty impressive, they got ice cream and cookies. Though the mall appears to be extremely successful, this has a major impact on the small town, as we see a group of protesters gathered together to rally against the mall, upset that the mall has cost them business, showing us how big business always pushes out the little man, as we move on to another 
perfect summer locale, a funfair carnival presented by Mayor Klein, who it seems is trying to deflect from the backlash over his mall by appealing to the townsfolk with a good old carnival. Well, that usually works. Hopper at the fair, looking a little roughed up, stares in disbelief at something, with Joyce seen nearby behind them. Hopefully they got their date. Also, he's standing in front of a Gravitron, one of my personal favorite carnival rides, where it uses centrifugal force to push you up against the wall. You know, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I love those as a kid. Here's another previously unconsidered kind of threat. What looks like a hitman in a Terminator-inspired Hall of Mirrors. While we don't know who he is after, he is definitely looking to assassinate someone at the fair. Hopper talking to Joyce seems to reaffirm the idea that she's ready to leave Hawkins behind, prom him promising her that this can still be her home and she can feel safe here, which I'm sure he really wants to believe, but come on, in Hawkins, that's easier said than done. Next, we see Eleven standing alone on a beach, which as Hawkins isn't a coastal town, leads me to think she's using her telepathy here. Looking out and seeing the distinctive red lightning in the sky, previously associated with the Mind Flayer coming to our dimension. Perhaps she is starting to see here that the threat from the Upside Down is rumbling back to life. Our next scene with Eleven is in that black void between dimensions, where she first touched the Demogorgon and opened the portal between our dimensions. It's hard to say what is going on here, as she leaps into a bathtub that vanishes. In the next shot, seeing her trapped under the water and struggling to get to the surface. Billy takes an overly dramatic shower, and we see why, looking to a wound on his arm, emanating in black veins across his skin. Since one of the episode titles was The Bite, could this be what it was referring to? Either way, it looks like the bad boy is going to get a lot more evil, as that obviously upside down based infection spreads. We then move on to what must be the abandoned Hawkins Energy Building, who we know was kicked out of town at the end of season two. But of course, other people are going to be drawn there after learning what happened. And I'm not sure what the actual intention of this ornate device is, seeing glowing light inside, all leading to a barrel at the end. Presumably some kind of energy cannon, hoping to reopen the door to the other side. Regardless, what it actually does isn't probably its design purpose. The entire chassis exploding out in waves of electricity, blowing back the mask wearing guys into the air. The electricity burning them right through their fancy suits. A lot of good those did you boys. We know that Lucas's younger sister, the scene stealing Erica, will be getting more in on the action this go around. Here's seen on some kind of mission, John McCleaning it through the air vents, probably at the mall. The gang's all here, gathered together in the mall food court, and looking all kinds of befuddled. Shattered glass on the ground, Steve with a black eye, and Eleven's nose freshly bleeding, indicating she's just used her powers in some capacity. Our first official look at Mayor Klein, played by Carrie Elway, really going for a big celebration with a marching band and everything, proclaiming Happy Fourth of July triumphantly. And I'm sure I, like many of you, are getting the mayor from Jaws vibes from his persona. He's trying to make the town money and stay in office, obviously willing to cover up whatever incidents he needs to in order to succeed. The Rats, a brief teaser shot was released yesterday, showing us that the title Mall Rats release takes on a double meaning here. Who knows what these rats are going to do, but I can't help but think of them spreading a plague of some sorts. Oh, the one shot of new character Bruce, played by Jake Busey, and he looks totally deranged. That's a surprise. We know Bruce is a journalist for the local paper, where Nancy and Jonathan were seeking employment. But based on what's happening here, smiling insanely, blood on his shirt in a hospital hallway, it looks like things aren't quite right in Bruce's head. At the mall, we get a glimpse of Robin, Steve, Dustin, and Erica staring through windows at the mall. And this team up has already gotten me excited. Eleven is blindfolded at what looks like the same grocery store she robbed of Eggos in season one. Here with a US flag bandana covering her eyes and is obviously channeling her powers to see the other side. Hopper's got his own big gun too at what must be the funfair, most likely part of the same scene with the assassin earlier. So it looks like that big energy laser thing did work at some point, channeling its beam towards a blackened surface, which begins to emanate in red from the beam source, more than likely being what is responsible for the dimensional portal being reopened. Way to go, guys. Jonathan at the hospital comes across a hulking thing at the end of the hallway, staring in horror as it rises and protrusions begin to shoot from its sides. We'll see more of that in a bit. What I'm assuming to be Billy's eye, we see black veins taken over going towards the pupil really feeling like Billy is going to go total dark side this season and emerge as a real villain influenced by the Upside Down. It looks like our assassin friend from the funfair got a firepower upgrade, and he's unloading on whatever is right above him. This very quick shot stands out for a number of reasons. First of all, I have no idea who the heck these people are, but I'm assuming they are mother and daughter. But they have a very odd look about them. Even their walk is decidedly weirdly robotic and not human, as though these two are being controlled by something else. Perhaps we're dealing with a body snatcher scenario here, where the Upside Down is infiltrating us through people, which 
would actually be really cool, and this seems to kind of indicate that. Poor Steve gets a hefty needle in the neck, with what looks like Robin's hair whipping behind them, probably tied to that other shot of the whole crew with his matching black eye. Who knows what they're injecting him with? Maybe a serum that is also connected to the previous two's odd behavior. New experiments involving injecting us with the darkness from the other dimension. Eleven falls through the black void, wearing the same outfit as at the store, most likely being what she sees after focusing her powers. Eleven kiss! Whee! Hey, it's Murray at the carnival, looking more disheveled than ever. And due to his frantic state and that he's wearing an undershirt, I feel like he didn't, you know, pick out that outfit for the fair. And makes me think he's the one that the hitman is targeting, due to his important role in taking down and exposing Hawkins' energy. I have a feeling that the hitman will actually kill Murray, leading to a whole new conspiracy storyline tied to the lingering masterminds behind the Hawkins' energy facility. That sure looks like the earlier glimpsed Heather, looked over by Eleven as she is pulled away underwater in the void. So it looks like she will be the missing lifeguard of the episode's title. Eleven here learning that she's been pulled into the other dimension, or is perhaps a warning of what's to come and she tries to stop it. The trailer kept flashing to our big slimy monster being revealed, here seeing in a wide shot that Nancy is on the other end of the hall as well. Once the lights blink back on, we get our first good look at the thing. And my god, it's horrifying! This monstrous huge creature with one long arm and three smaller crab-like limbs and even more in the back, not to mention that big old mouth full of fangs. This thing makes the Demogorgon look like a cute little puppy dog. It also just looks so remarkably different than anything we've seen from the Upside Down up to this point. And since they're at the hospital, makes me consider that Thing was at one point a person that mutated into this giant monster guy. The obvious suspect here is Billy, since we've seen he was bitten, and perhaps the effect continued to spread to the point of concern. And newly minted journalists Nancy and Jonathan go to the hospital after learning Billy has fallen under mysterious illness, and get to see for themselves what happened. Seriously, I don't know how those two are going to get out of the situation. That thing is a beast. And this shot was a great way to end the trailer, showing us that we don't quite know everything yet about that pesky upside down dimension, and that the Duffers still have some unexpected surprises up their sleeves. Looks like a lot of new and exciting adventures are in store for all of our favorite residents of Hawkins. And thanks to that trailer, I cannot wait for the new season. It looks like they really try to recapture the fun spirit of the show, and are also taking things into dangerous new directions. What did you guys think of the Stranger Things 3 trailer? What part got you most excited? What theories do you have about what's in store? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Make sure to like, subscribe, and follow for all the latest on Stranger Things Season 3 and all things horror. Thanks for watching Found Flicks. See you next time.